Brothers and sisters, we've had a complaint. As you know, just before Shabuoth, I put out this little video that we filmed about a year ago with my son Josiah, and he was uh, just, I coached him and he got to read the um, article that our brother Lou wrote on Happy Anniversary Yahuwah. Well, somewhere in that article and in that video, there's a part that talks about the, the unwise virgins and how it's Christianity. Well, we've had a complaint. I mean, that article is, that article is a few years old, but uh, we've had a complaint. This is from another believer. I don't think we should say that the Christians are the unwise virgins anymore. Remember your study on the Darnell? They are the unwise virgins and they are planted in amongst the wheat. That's the Nazarene, amongst the rain. These weeds could come from many different beliefs. I think that we can do better than brand one belief system as the unwise who knows, we might be putting a stumbling block before Christians who are really seeking. Our mission isn't to guess we know what and who the whore is, that she is a beast, but coming out of her into the Nazarene belief where the Darnell is planted is a different thing altogether. The Darnell was planted by Harshatan and they are consciously evil. They have no desire to bear good fruit and constantly want to sow confusion amongst the true Nazareth. The good fruit is our worship, our behavior, and the Darnell can do nothing about us. For they shall be separated from the wheat at the appropriate time. We must live amongst those who say they are true Nazareth, but lie. It's easy to see the difference by their fruit or their behavior. Nevertheless, we strive to meet the master's requirements knowing this adversary. Somewhere the scripture says, why did you stop? Or who has stopped you? You were doing so well. We are either doing Torah or we are not doing Torah. Simple. Personally, I felt so relieved from your study about the Darnell. I realized that I was in the beast and a Christian coming out. And if someone had told me that I was an unwise virgin, I would have been quite devastated. So because now I know that the Darnell is planted amongst the Nazarene, and it's something we all have to understand, I can now have much more love, understanding, and time to give to the Christians. Remember the Darnell is amongst us, the Nazarene. The unwise virgins are right here with us. They are not just Christians, but are wicked, evil trouble causers trying to stop the work of Yahusha and give his people a bad reputation. We need not fear this enemy that says they are us, but ours is to occupy until he comes. Nothing can stand in the way of Yahushua's plans and they will be fulfilled. Harshatan has all the religions in his hands, so he is not worried about who is who, because he owns them all. Harshatan's real enemy is the woman, the bride, of Yahusha, the true Nazarim, who are teaching the covenant, the wedding vows, which we will be celebrating this weekend. That's Shabuoth, it's just past, we celebrated the marriage covenant, the vows given at Sinai. Harshatan wants to do everything he can to destroy the wise virgins who bring the truth about Yahusha. This is why we have the Darnell planted amongst the Nazarim. Try as they may, they won't stop the armed forces of Yahusha. And it's such a sad thing that many Nazarim are not aware of the warfare going on around them. Scripture says that my people perish through lack of knowledge. What about that, brothers and sisters? That's from a concerned brother who has seen a lot of our studies and teachings. And he said that, that we shouldn't be calling the Christians the unwise virgins. It's true, isn't it? It's uh, very different to what I understood before. Uh, what we've all understood before. I mean, you know, that article Lou wrote was a few years old, and I think, well, I don't think I know. Here's Lou's response right here. Dear brother, your comments about the tears among the Nats room are so true, and we have to be vigilant. 
treating those who cause divisions and strife according to how Scripture leads us. We have to love even those who are malicious towards us. Yahushua has given us wonderful counselling concerning how to deal with the pressures of living in the field of the world and among those who sharpen their tongue like a snake. So I wanted to share these with you for encouragement. And then he's got Psalm 140, verse 1 to 13 here. Rescue me, O Yahuwah, from men of evil. Preserve me from men of violence who have devised evils in their hearts. They stir up conflicts all day long. They sharpen their tongues like a snake. The poison of cobras is under their lips. Selah. Guard me, O Yahuwah, from the hands of the wrong. Guard me from a man of violence who has schemed to trip up my steps. The proud have hidden a trap for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set snares for me. Silla. I have said to Yahuwah, you are my El. Hear the voice of my prayers, O Yahuwah. O Master Yahuwah, my saving strength. You have screened my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wrong, O Yahuwah. Do not promote his scheme, Silah. Those who surround me lift up their head. The trouble of their lips cover them. The trouble of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them be made to fall into the fire, into deep pits. Let them not rise again. Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the man of violence speedily. I have known that Yahuwah maintains the cause of the afflicted, the right ruling of the poor. Oh, let the righteous give thanks to your name. Let the straight ones dwell in your presence. And in Mount Yahu, it says, Do not judge, lest you be judged. For what judgment? For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. It doesn't just mean at the end. It means it comes back on you. You feel it. And with the same measure you use, it shall be measured to you. And why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not notice the plank in your own eye? Or how is it that you say to your brother, let me remove the splinter out of your eye and see a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you shall see clearly to remove the splinter out of your brother's eye. 2 Thessalonians 3.14 It says, and if anyone does not obey our word in this letter, note that one, note that one, and do not keep company with him so that he is put to shame. However, do not regard him as an enemy but admonish him as a brother. Romans 16, verse 17. Now I call upon you, brothers, watch out for those who cause divisions and stumbling, contrary to the teaching which you have learned, and turn away from them. For such ones do not serve our master, Yahushua Messiah, but their own stomach, and by smooth words and flattering speech they deceive the hearts of the innocent. Your obedience indeed is reported to all. Therefore, I rejoice concerning you, but I wish you to be wise indeed as to the good and simple toward the evil. And the Elohim of peace shall crush Satan under your feet shortly. The favour of our master, Yahushua, be, uh, Yahushua Messiah be with you. Amen. And finally, in Luke 6, 43, For a good tree does not yield rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree yield good fruit. For each tree is known by its fruit. For they do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. The good man brings forth what is good out of the good treasures of his heart. And the wicked man brings forth what is wicked out of the wicked treasures of his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, his mouth speaks. What about back there in a couple of scriptures ago? Romans 16, it said, by smooth words. And then higher up. Where was the other one? They sharpen their tongues like a snake. If you have to sharpen a knife or something, you have to sharpen it, consciously sharpen it. It's not an accident. There's people who are sharpening their tongue, studying, looking, watching reactions, watching the things that affect people, how to say it, how to work it, sharpening their tongues to get the best reaction out of you. They study this. They watch other people. They try things out. They watch the TV and the movies and see, see what works and how people are offended and how it cuts them down and hurts them. 
sharpening their tongues for hate, for evil. There's people on this earth who only live, only live to do evil. Did you know that? Well, if you feel like that yourself, you're a Darnell, mate. But if you don't feel like that, and you don't have any inclination or want to feel like that, you're just struggling and trying to find Yahushua everywhere you go in that relationship, then like, my, like myself, you have to face what's going on around you. I've had to face all this stuff as well. I'm still facing it. That I'm not conscious of evil spirits. I know we're not supposed to communicate with them or, you know, have anything to do with them. But if you don't face that they're there and you think everything you hear is you and every, every interaction you have with people, it's just them, then, you know, you go from place to place to place complaining and hating people and you can't sleep at night. You're burdened, you're tormented because of what you put yourself through, your wife through, your husband through, your family. You're not free. We need to face that there's evil spirits just playing games with us, brothers and sisters, laughing behind our backs. They think we're so stupid because we don't know that they're even there. Oh, yeah, evil spirits. We all know about evil spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't face evil spirits in your day. Are you facing that when you're in front of somebody that they might have something come out of them and spit out your face? That's the dragon coming at you. He's after you. You're his bride. He's after you. hates you. And I haven't faced any of this. I just take everything personal. You know? Get angry. I don't, I don't rage. Though. I just hold it all in because I'm a passive-aggressive person. I just bottle it all up inside here. And smile and fade. Inside, I just want to rip them to shreds. This hate builds up inside you. You know? That's not the way to do it. We're supposed to be in Yahushua's love. Yahushua's love it conquers all of that. But we need to believe it. It's through belief. Everything is through belief. If you don't believe that his love is that real and it's there for you to partake of and to be filled with and express it to others, then it's not going to work, is it? When are you going to see Messianics, Nazarim? When are you going to face that you are nothing? When are you going to face that the little things that you get on there and type, nobody cares? Nobody cares what your opinion is? Who cares? Sorry about my voice. I'm just getting my voice back. I'm sorry I sound a bit like a transmit guy. Nobody cares what you think. So your little, little words of hatred and Oh, I'm, I've found something and I'm going to prove it to everybody. I'm right, you know. Nobody cares. Who cares? Who do you think you are? I'm going back looking at half the Torah talks I've filmed with Lou, looking at this person that looks like me, and I'm just going, who the hell is that? Who do you think you are? You're such a... I don't say well, what I really thought. Oh, my goodness. I'm going through massive things inside myself, facing who I think I am. I'm nothing. Nobody. When are you going to face the same thing? You're nothing. Nobody. You're nothing. Can I say it again? You are nothing. The only good thing about you is Yahusha. So unless you're speaking what Yahusha wants you to speak, you're just, you're just an idiot. So give it up who you think you are. It's got to go through these things, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry, sorry I'm not full of jokes and stuff today, but oh my goodness, it's real. This is how I've been feeling, really down and burdened by all this stuff. Yahushua doesn't want you to be in that place. We have to be loving one another. So brothers and sisters, as Lou's been saying for years, it's all about love. And the more you come into this experience and the more scripture you read that you fill yourself with, the more experiences you have, you just realize how profound and yet simple those words are. It's all about love. Love is the only thing that works. You can type and type and type and argue and argue and try to convince somebody for hours. Who do you think you are? You can't change anybody's mind about something. It's so boring. I wish you'd all get a life. Try turning off your computer for a whole weekend. I did it last weekend and you go through withdrawals. But it's the most wonderful experience. Try doing it. 
spending time with your wife and your family or your husband and your children. Get off the computer. It's this, it's fake. It's so fake. Who you portray yourself to be is so fake. And who you think you are. How would somebody be, the people you're communicating with, if they came and spent time with you, spent a week with you? How would they really feel about being in your company, despite the wonderful things you can type? You know, that's got to be real. You know, these are the things I'm having to face myself. That's why I'm expressing them to you like this. It's hideous, the feeling you go through, because you realise that you're just not real. And Yahushua wants his bride perfect, spotless, without wrinkle or blemish, real, not fake. He doesn't want us to be fake. He wants his love to be real. So brothers and sisters, see what I'm saying. Lou's been saying it for years. It's all about love. So if there are people among us who will not, and I'm not talking about young believers who are still learning and they're in a process and we can guide them and counsel them and coach them. I'm not talking about those. If there are people among us, and you know it, who just will not love and they're sharpening their tongue, then face it. Face it. And we're not to hate them. We're to love them. But you still have to face it. Otherwise, demons have a field day with you. Turns you against your friends. Turns you against your wife, your husband. All these thoughts you have. You've got to check all your thoughts. It's so important to be in the love and the joy and the peace. But that doesn't come easily. You've got to face what's going on around you. And I haven't wanted to face that. I don't want to face what evil spirits are doing in my day to all the people in front of me. I don't want to face that. And yet when I look back in retrospect, the last 10 years, I've just been ripped off. Totally ripped off. Because evil spirits haven't faced that they're there. I've been so unsatisfied, complaining everywhere I go, hating circumstances and hating people and, you know, because of what they're doing to me. And I don't feel, I don't want to get, why won't everybody just leave me alone? I'm not trying to, I'm not feeling like that about them. Well, because I'm a Nazarene. That's what's going to, I'm, a, I'm part of the bride. The dragon hates me. He's coming after me to try and kill me. And I turn around and I'm surprised that I'm getting some pressure. What do you expect? So I hope you can learn or associate at least from some of these experiences I'm going through. It's not pleasant if you don't face the truth. I mean, it's not pleasant if you do face the truth, but you can overcome if you face the truth. Do not be deceived. The scripture says it everywhere. Do not be deceived. So what does Yahushua know is going to happen in the last days? Deception everywhere. And he's urging us, teaching us, do not be deceived. Face the truth about everyone and everything around you. And then once you face the truth, you can better love them. You can better understand where they're coming from. And if they are blatantly a Darnell coming at you with their sharp tongue, you can blatantly either avoid it or just have nothing to do with it. Love it if you need to, the person. Hate the spirit, love the person. Just understand. I hope this has come out the right way. I'm sorry if it hasn't, if it's confusing, but I'm still going through it all. I've just been out there trying to connect people and say, get people to say hello and g'day and this is who I am and everything. And It's very discouraging. Because you realise there's just so many feelings and emotions and everything going on out there. So we all need to wear our armour, brothers and sisters, all the time. Put your armour on. You have to face the truth about your circumstance, brothers and sisters. Yahushua is there teaching you, showing you he's not happy with things in your life. You have to face the truth. You can't be angry at people who might try to help you or point things out to you. You have to face the truth about what's going on in your life, about how you behave, about how you dress, about what you eat, about your cleanliness, about the look of your house, what's going on in your house. Are there piles of junk everywhere? Do you look like an absolute weirdo? What kind of uh, you know, witness are you going to be to somebody if you, if you don't blend in? I'm not talking about your behaviour blend in. I'm talking about we need to walk among them 
as though we are them, but we have something different inside us. Not outwardly, inside us. We have this treasure inside us, this love, this lamp burning with Yahushua's love. And we have to be very cunning, gentle as a dove and cunning as a snake, who we share it with. Because you can get in big trouble. And as you know, you get in big trouble if you've got this love inside you. You're not allowed to have that. You're not allowed to have a smile on your face. What are you smiling about? Did you take your happy pills this morning, did you? What are you smiling about? So you've got to be very careful. Be as they are. Face what Yahushua is showing you about your life. How you eat, how you dress, how you behave, how you treat one another. Go around your house and get everything in order. Get your home in order. Make it look nice. Because if people come over, they just go, oh, who is this? I'm out of here. You know? You've got to be a good witness to people. And it comes right down to the little itty-gritty necessities, practical things in life. That's what it all comes down to. So you've got to be real. He wants a real bride. Not a bride that knows everything in Scripture back to front, knows how to speak Hebrew, knows everything. Those things are great, but he wants a real bride, one that can communicate truth. When put on the spot, we'll just tell the truth, you know? We all have different gifts and different talents, and we're not to look at one another and go, oh, I wish I could do that. Wish I had what he had. Wish I could do what she does. It's not, it's not what it's about. We're all part of the body. We all float and move together. But we have to face the truth about everything. So face it. Face where you are at. Face all the things that are going wrong in your life. And don't, don't say, oh, it's someone else's fault. Don't say it's all spirits. Yahushua is showing you that he's not happy with what you're doing. That's what happens when things go wrong. He's showing you things. So face it. Oh, when are you going to realise, brothers and sisters, that it's all about love? When are we going to wake up and see what Yahushua wants for us, from us, with us? When are we going to extend our belief and realise that we are in his hands? He's in control of everything. He knows what we need. He knows the desires of our hearts. He just wants us to trust him for everything. He knows everything, our desires, our beliefs, our, our wants, our needs, our plans. He knows everything. He knows how many hairs are on your head. When are we going to just believe in him, trust him for everything, break out of the depression we're all in? It's, it's not right. We're supposed to trust him. If you don't trust him, it's sin. When are you going to wake up and be of a morning, wake up of a morning and be thankful and grateful for the life he's given you? Would you prefer to be back how you were? Would you prefer to be one of those other people you see who are broken and beaten and being dragged around the world? We see them every day. We just wish we could reach them. Would you prefer to be like one of them? When are you going to wake up every morning and be happy? This is what Yahushua is saying to me. And I'm saying it to you. When are we going to wake up to ourselves, brothers and sisters? You know, Satan can just say to me, oh, what are you even recording this for, Mark? Who the hell's interested? It's just another opinion out on the airwaves. Well, we need more opinions out on the airwaves. If it's love, if it's expressing Yahushua's love, promoting Yahushua's love, we need it. Get on your internets, brothers and sisters, and love Type love, speak love. Share the Yahushua's love. It's all about love. Love. You can't stress it enough. When are we going to wake up? There are people in our day who are just there to hate us. That's their whole purpose for being on this earth. To hate us. To get in our way. To use up our time. To exhaust us. It's so exhausting dealing with half these people. But this is what we're here for, to deal with people, to occupy, to love, to overcome all of that. 
so that we're expressing Yahushua's love no matter what. I can't do it yet, but I'm hearing this and I'm saying it to you. We need to overcome the world, the wickedness, the evil that's in here, it's in our hearts. They can't look at anywhere else. All your problems are in here. It's you. You're your own biggest problem. When are you going to overcome it? It's time to wake up, brothers and sisters, and fight. Don't go fighting spirits and things. Just, just don't do what they say. Ignore them. And love people. That's how you overcome it. Spirit, just, just you know, do the opposite. Love people. Love conquers sin. Love conquers strongholds. Love breaks down all the negativity. So we need to be loving. It's not about how intellectual you are or how wonderful the things you type are. It's what people see. How do people feel after being in your company? How do they feel? Do they want to go and shoot themselves? Or do they feel like, oh, that was, I've really had a good time. I'm not even, it doesn't even matter if you talked about Yahushua or not. How do they feel when they're in your company? They feel uplifted and happy. Oh, that was a nice bloke. Really enjoyed chatting to him. We need to face the truth, brothers and sisters, about our existence, why we're here, what we're doing. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your time. It's time you face the truth. If you want to go all the way with Yahusha, it's agony, it's pain and suffering and facing yourself. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Face the truth. Thank you, brothers and sisters. So be it.